Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word. Thanks for joining me. Today, Proverbs chapters 15 and 16, verse 20 of chapter 16. He who heeds the word wisely will find good, and whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Another great verse, I think, that summarizes the, uh, the message of the book of Proverbs. So let me ask you this. How are you enjoying your journey through the book of Proverbs? Uh, I will tell you, the book of Proverbs provides such practical insight for living. I, I, there's hardly a day goes by that I do not lean on something from the book of Proverbs as I make decisions um, or look for direction. Like the book of James, which we'll get to later in our journey, Proverbs is a very practical book, very practical for living. Verse 1, chapter 15, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. You know what? We would all be better if we would take this great advice. Have you noticed something here in Proverbs, how often it talks about words, our mouth, our lips? Now, in these two chapters this morning, out of the 66 verses in these two chapters, 15 verses deal directly with what comes out of our mouth. No other single topic is highlighted more. Now, that should tell us something. Verse 2, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. When we use knowledge in the right way, guess what? Others benefit from it. Verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Nothing is beyond the observation and the knowledge of God. Nothing. Keep that in mind. Verse 4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. You know, we will see this again and again in Proverbs, the power of our words and how we choose to use them. Verse 5, a fool despises his father's instruction, but he who receives correction is prudent. Now, this is a, a straightforward truth. It reminds me of something an older colleague of mine used to say in the legislature back when I was in the House of Representatives. He, he, he would be talking before the legislature and he would say, I, I, I can explain it to you, but I can't make you understand it. You know what? Some people just don't get it. Verse 6, In the house of the righteous there is much treasure, but in the revenue of the wicked is trouble. Now notice the different words here. Treasure versus revenue or income. Now which denotes more value? Prosperity is more than income. All right. Verse 8, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Now look at this. The Lord rejects what the wicked gives, but grants what the righteous request. Look also at verse 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Right, back to verse 10. Harsh discipline is for him who forsakes the way, and he who hates correction will die. Now here's a warning. If you're a child of God and you stray, expect God to discipline you. Verse 13. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. You know, we can, we can actually break our own spirit by dwelling on the challenges and the problems of life. By just meditating on our problems. Meditating on the problems of life. You know, worrying only increases anxiety, which leads to a, a sad heart and a broken spirit. So, how do we keep from falling into the pit of despair? We pray. We plan and we perform. That's what Nehemiah did when he was informed of the destruction of Jerusalem. He prayed. The Lord gave him a plan and then he performed it. Verse 15, all the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. Now, let me go back to that for just a minute, something I mentioned there, the pray, plan, perform. I've actually used that uh, when I was pastoring and we had a, a flood uh, that encompassed our entire region a lot of devastation, it was to, to, number one, pray, get a plan from God, and then put people to work. And I've seen this over and over in crisis situations, that if, we, if we're not seeking God, not listening to God, and not doing something, we become discouraged. And that's where the you know, idle hands of the devil's workshop, the little idle minds, become to, start to imagine all kinds of things and become depressed, discouraged, and really zaps us of our joy. Just, I thought I needed to throw that in there because maybe somebody here, maybe someone on this journey, you've got some things going on in your life and you need to pray, you need to plan, and then move. Faith without works is dead. Okay, 
Uh, let me go back to verse 15. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. You know, this, this, is, this talks about attitude. The state of the heart governs our outward condition, not the other way around, okay? It is not our environment that determines our well-being as much as our internal well-being determines our environment. And that's the opposite of the way the world looks at it. Verse 16, better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fatted calf with hatred. You know what? Things cannot make you content. Verse 18, a wrathful man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger allays contention. Don't be a hothead, all right? Verse 20, a wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother. Wow, what a fool, despising your own mother. Verse 22, without counsel, plans go awry, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Seek counsel. 23, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season. How good it is. Again, the power of our words. He who is greedy for gain, verse 27, troubles his own house, but he who hates bribes will live. You know, green, greed has ruined many reputations, destroyed numerous careers, and wrecked many lives. Verse 28, the heart of the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. Caution, caution is the fruit of wisdom. Verse 30, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and a good report makes the bones healthy. What gives light, what builds up, rejoices the heart, and makes the bone healthy? Our diet of information and what we meditate upon affects our health. This is borne out in study after study. Anxious? Guess what? Turn off the TV and turn to the Word of God. Listen to praise music. Don't listen to talk radio. Verse 32, He who disdains instruction despises his own soul, but he who heeds rebuke gets understanding. You know, a person's response to reproof will tell you a lot about that person. Instruction is another prominent themes of pro a theme of Proverbs in this chapter. In this chapter alone, it's, uh, it, it is the focus of five verses. Verse 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. The fear of the Lord leads to wisdom, which leads to humility, which leads to honor. Chapter 16, the preparation of the heart belongs to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. A man makes his plans, but the execution of those plans fulfills the purposes of God. Look at verse 9. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Verse 2, back to verse 2. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. God knows our hearts better than we know it. Verse 3, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Rely on God for success to your lawful purposes. Roll your burden on to the Lord. Verse 5, everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none, none will go unpunished. While the proud in heart, which reject the truth of God, may be great in number and unified in their defiance of God, they are not. They are not. Listen up. They are not a match for God. So choose wisely which side you will stand on. God will not be mocked. Truth will prevail. Do you want to be on the right side of history? Stand on the Word of God. Verse 6, In mercy and truth atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord one departs from evil. There is not atonement, listen up, there is not atonement without mercy and truth. God is both. Now think about this for a moment. There's need, there is no need for mercy without truth. It is the truth that makes us free to experience the mercy of God. Verse 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Obey God, don't worry about people, God will take care of them. Verse 8, better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues without justice. Why? Because there is peace and contentment with what God gives without fear or guilt. Verse 12, it is an abomination for kings to commit wickedness, for a throne is established by righteousness. A corrupt government undermines its own power. Right? That's what it's saying here. The government sh should punish evil and promote good, which will lead to prosperity and peace, which benefits everyone. This is not a partisan statement because it is both Republican and Democrat. 
that are, you know, really both have problems, all right? Although the latter seems to be perfecting it, a government that departs from biblical truth is promoting lawlessness. And in doing so, it undercuts its own authority and ability. Verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride, pride will bring you down. Proverbs makes that very clear. Verse 20, he who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. He who wisely considers the word of God will find good. And he who trusts in the Lord will be blessed. It's the word of God. Verse 21, the wise in heart will be called prudent. And sweetness of the lips increases learning. It matters. It does matter how we say things. Look at Proverbs 20, 16, 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Verse 25, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. You know, we can think it's right and even be convinced that our way is right, but we need to evaluate our way according to God's way, according to the Word of God. Verse 32, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. You see, controlling our emotions and our spirit, our emotion, our you know, how we respond. This is a great accomplishment. And it's something we should all work toward. Verse 33, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. God is not a God of chance. He is the God of design. And even that which is done counter to his purposes, he can and does repurpose for his glory. Father, thank you for your word. Once again, we just thank you, Father, for the wisdom that we have, the the understanding that we can gain from your word on, on how we should live this life. I pray, Father, that it would begin with a fear of you, a reverence for you, that that would mean that we would come to your word wanting to learn, wanting to yield to your word, not wanting to change your word to fit our lives, but changing our lives to fit your word. May the Holy Spirit lead us, continue to lead us on this journey, teaching us as we meditate upon, as we read and dwell on your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thanks for being with me this morning. And uh, if you would like to know more, if you're new on this journey, you'd like to know more, text the word Bible to 67742. That's Bible to 67742. Until next time, keep standing on the word.